He suffered fourth degree burns over 80% of his body. If he survives, he'll be paralyzed from the waist down, confined to a wheelchair. You say you can save him, but what does that mean? What kind of life will he have? What kind of suit is this? It's not a suit, it's you. What the hell did you do to me? Iron Man, Spider-Man, those are superheroes that kids want to be. Right? I want to be Iron Man. And so you make those movies based on that concept, like I got a charismatic actor, I make great action scenes, and the kids will see the movie because of that. Now, not, a, not even Alex Murphy wants to be Robocop. It's, it just doesn't fit the Hollywood mode. So because of that, I could bring uh, my Brazilian style of filmmaking into this big uh, Hollywood uh, film and, and hopefully succeed on uh, bringing the issues that I wanted to debate with the film into it. The software sends the information to the brain. Then the brain relates this to the AI module. Yeah. A year later. And our computers finished the job, Raymond. You, you wanted a man inside a machine, and, and that's what you've got, but, but the human element will always be present. Fear, instinct, bias, uh, compassion, they will always interfere with the system. Okay, but damn it. I've got to give the American people something they can root for, something aspirational, right? They have to believe in this thing. Pretty good, that's not, I don't know how to sell, okay. Full Metal Jacket. Right? It's a movie where you see troops being trained to go for war, and all the training is about taking away the humanity of the troops so they can behave like machines. Uh, Verhoeven understood that there's a connection between the automation of violence and fascism. And you can think about it in several ways, like why did American and Britain pull out of Iraq? Because American and English soldiers were dying. If you take away the soldiers and you put robots there, what would have happened? So that core idea that's in this in heart and soul of Robocop, it's very fruitful and it's very meaningful today because what was fictional in, in the 80s is now real. We're already using drones. We'll soon be replacing armies uh, of soldiers with armies of robots and policemen by automated machines. The original was very sort of futuristic and fantastical. And we've sort of caught, we've sort of caught up with it. I mean, I was thinking privatization's a sort of big theme of the original. Yeah, um, and, 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 and this one. And yeah, and and the c corporate world, and the and the real cutthroat sort of. Uh, I mean, that's the challenge of that. that I mean, that's the position that, that that my character is in, where he's now suddenly in the sort of c corporate world that, that has deadlines, and release dates, and and I'm saying, but this guy isn't ready. And they say, we don't care. We just need him on the street. Make him more tactical. Make him look, uh, let's go with black. When the machine fights, the system releases signals into Alex's brain, making him think he's in control. But he's not. It's the illusion of free will. We as a society and, and all the different nations and even the UN are going to have to make a decision of how we're going to face this new technology and, and, and and decide what implications we're going to let it have on our society and and also the the dangers that that might have and and I mean Verhoeven you know drew drew the correlation between the automation of violence and fascism and I think we take that idea even further in this film it's an ironic way to say something about a, a subject matter that's going to be very important in the near future I'll bet you that the guardian will soon be writing about how different countries are deciding uh, what to do with uh, law enforcement, whether they're going to automatize it or not. The UN will host meetings about what's going to be legal or illegal in war, uh, as far as the use of robots go. I mean, technology poses the question. Think about the NSA. I mean, every country can hear and intercept email messages and find out what's going on with uh, her sister. Some countries choose to do it, others choose not to do it. It's going to be the same thing with the use of robots. Until today, Thomas King was a convicted felon, wanted for rape, arson, and murder. Here he is, just steps away from two of Detroit's finest. These two officers are completely unaware of the monster in their midst. And then, in 60 seconds, I repeat, just 60 seconds, Detective Murphy brings him down. the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. This, my friends, is the future 
of American justice. In our movie, America has decided to uh, allow robots to kill people abroad, but do not allow robots to kill people at home. Uh, maybe that sounds familiar. Uh, in any case, uh, they've decided to do that, and this corporation who produces robots wants to sell them at home, so they want to change the law. So the movie talks about corporations trying to change the law for their own profit. Now, that sounds really familiar, right? Just get him to do that. Not him to do that. It's a machine. I know, but it's a man inside a machine. No, that's a man inside a machine. Right, right there. And, and his life depends on it, and the future of Omnicorp depends on it. So get your ass back to China and get it fixed. I don't care how you do it, just go do it.